afternoon I wanted to get outside and try to do something kind of relaxing or solve a problem just for my mind. And one of those things that uh, really kind of stuck in my mind about cutting our timber frame and all the other uh, peripheral activities around that was this little baby chainsaw. This is a little steel 250. It's a fantastic little saw. When it comes to just cutting firewood around the house, it's such a pleasure to run. As we worked on this timber frame, as I generated massive amounts of firewood, the saw performance really dropped off fast. It seemed like early on, we had a brand new chain and the saw cut fantastic and everybody was getting a ton of work done. And then pretty quickly, the performance of the chain dropped off. If you recall, we purchased the steel easy sharpener. It has a guide on the front and the back that allows it to use the teeth as guides. And then it also has a raker file built into it that automatically sets the depth of your rakers. I had everybody using this sharpener and yet the saw progressively cut worse and worse. Everybody was sharpening. They're sharpening constantly. A couple days ago, I went to uh, the store and I happened to grab a new chain because I thought, ah, we'll just replace the chain. I took a moment and I just filed down the rakers because I thought maybe they didn't look like they'd been touched too much and I thought maybe that was the issue and it did not cut any better. I thought, ah, I'll just get that new chain put on there and then I know the saw is good to go. If you know me and you're anything like me, you say to yourself, you know what? I never really understood what the problem was. I never took the time to say, why is this chain not cutting? On the top of the teeth, you can see, like on this tooth, there's still life in this tooth. It still can be sharpened. So why is it not cutting? I was thinking at first that maybe the depth gauges just needed to be filed down a little bit more. But if you look at the profile of this tooth, man, I mean, the depth gauge is miles below this tooth. And I thought, well, did Alyssa sharpen it? So I kind of just gave the teeth a quick look and now they don't look great, but they don't look terrible either. And all we were getting was a really fine kind of powdery, powdery dust. I took the, the new chain off, I put this chain back on. I said, Jesse, I, I want to take a moment here. I have a lot to learn about this stuff. And I want to answer, why is this thing not cutting? And I got to thinking about how a saw file works. This file is round. That's a very basic chainsaw thing. And anybody who's a chainsaw veteran, I'm making their ears bleed, so I apologize. But a lot of us have a lot to learn about this stuff. And these very simple things often can create massive amounts of labor. If we'd have just taken a few minutes and kind of diagnosed the problem, the amount of hours we could have saved sawing would have been better. I took this file and I set it in this tooth and I got to looking at the profile. And what I realized is that we had been filing up the tooth. So this tooth, if you look really closely at it there, the profile of the tooth is almost vertical. Sure, there's a little bit of curve here in the gullet, but that's nowhere near the amount of curve on this file. So it looks like what has been happening is as we file this, we've been filing up and essentially filing the tip of the tooth away. So while this tooth has a knife edge and it's somewhat sharp, if you will, it doesn't cut worth beans. It's more like a blunt tip instead of being a sharp tooth. I thought, I wonder if maybe the issue is that as the easy sharpener is being used, not enough downward pressure is being placed on the sharpener to deepen the gullet as the chain is sharpened. If we kind of compare this brand new chain, if you look at the tooth, it slopes downward as it travels back. So logically, as you sharpen, you should also be traveling in that downward plane as you sharpen the tooth back. Looking at these teeth again, here's an example. Notice how we've been sharpening up not down. All we've done is effectively sharpen off the tip of the tooth. So I thought I would just test this theory and I used the sharpener and I just focused, instead of sharpening the tooth and pushing in, I decided to try just pressing firmly down to make sure that the guides are actually touching the tooth. The sharpener is actually not resting 
on the teeth in front and behind, it's actually resting on the file. So that told me that we have lots of work to do in order to deepen the gullet and reestablish the correct profile of these teeth. So if you look closely at this tooth, you'll see that I have reestablished that proper curved profile. I'm not saying that it's perfect, but it's a massive improvement over this profile, which kind of would have just a tendency to bounce off the wood, I would think. And then this back tooth here, I've done the same thing. So I only sharpened one half this side of the chain. Let's take a few minutes here and kind of shape this tooth and see if we can reestablish that curvature. So already this tooth is having a much more rounded profile. So if we look at this tooth, you'll notice that semi-rounded profile, but almost vertical. And the tooth that we just sharpened has a much more curved profile. This tooth, again, has a more vertical profile. And on the bottom here, you can see that the gullet has been riding up instead of being maintained. So I'm going to spend a little time and reestablish those gullets on all of these teeth and then give this saw a test. And I just have a hunch that instead of getting that fine powdery sawdust, we're gonna get some beautiful wood chips. I'm sure the veteran filers already know this, but I feel like when you have the sharpener in the tooth correctly, it should somewhat feel like the tooth is wrapping around the file. If it feels like you're kind of filing, not square, but it, I can't explain it, I guess. It should feel like the file is being kind of engulfed by the tooth. So when I first start filing one of these teeth, I don't feel that. I feel like I'm kind of just hitting a blunt object. But as I get deeper, I feel like the tooth starts to kind of envelop the file. Try to show this to you. My light's getting dim this afternoon, so it's beginning to get difficult to see. But this tooth has a nice curved profile now. And back here, I've begun to sharpen this tooth. My file is beginning to finally touch the entire curvature of the tooth. Whereas when I first started, it was only touching sort of in the front and bottom here. As that file goes in and establishes that profile, it begins to feel like you're sharpening. You can really feel the file removing the metal there. Tooth in front of it, you can see that this sharpening is very all-encompassing on the curvature of this tooth. And it looks much better or much similar to the factory tooth. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if it'll make wood chip or fine powdery sawdust. Ask for some help really quick from Alyssa because it's getting dark really fast. What? Right, but I also wanted to show Alyssa she's not going to believe how well this saw cuts. Well, that's way better. 
Check it out. It's not as good as when the chain's new, but tell me yeah. this is I'd not. Say those those chips are not big, they're fine, but it's dumping them out. Look at that! Where before, yes, it was. Oh my gosh. That's way better. Holy cow, right? Yeah. Can I just get a high five? Seriously, that was like 30 minutes. I'll let you get back to video. Thanks for helping me. Hug. Thanks for giving me a hand. Mm -hmm. I don't think they can see us because I think it's zoomed in. Hey, that's better, eh? We had a phenomenal amount of people helping to make our timber frame a success. And we had people who have never run a chainsaw in their life running a chainsaw. They've never sharpened a chainsaw. They've never done any of this stuff, but they were willing to help. And I think that really speaks a lot to their character, but it also has an effect on the ability to get things done. And I think the message is we're all learning. This feels good to me. Not only did I learn something today, I feel like I can help other people. And um, when other people come to help us, I feel like I can help them too. So anyway, long-winded, I know. But if maybe you're one of those folks out there that's got a chainsaw, you're struggling with it, I hope this helps you.